Hey there, hi, I'm Stable Garage. We got a little bit of a sit down type thing. We're gonna talk about expectations. And you know, the time frames and the goals that you set yourself forward to achieve. You know what I mean? And mostly the time frame. This right here is my 1954 International Chassis Swap. We did a complete front end on this, complete rear end on this, back half the frame, worked entirely on the bed, put a new floor in it. Basically, we've touched every part on this truck, and we had to make almost every part on this truck. We thought we were going to be done the body work on this before the new year, but, you know, it just doesn't seem like it's going to be the case. Welcome to Ohio Stable Garage. So, story time. We bought this truck early, early 2022, and it was an absolute shambles. A lot of you guys have joined, but you haven't seen where we got this truck and what condition it is. If you're curious, there is a video on the channel of us picking it up, if you want to watch that. But if not, I'll give you the quick breakdown of it. This body was a complete disaster. The best part on this entire truck was the hood, and the front of the bed. It has a little international logo up on the front. And that's it. The cab floor was gone. The front fascia was a mess of Bondo and fiberglass. The doors were a mess. One of them still is. The bed was an absolute disaster. We don't have a tailgate. And the fenders were basically non-existent. Both rear fenders and the front clip. Now, I don't really like to cut up a complete vehicle. We have a 1950s F47 on a different property, and that little sucker was pretty much all original. It was made with all original parts. Not original to that specific truck, but original all F47 or F1 type deal. This, on the other hand, it was not able to be done. This truck would have been most likely a parts truck for someone else, and there wasn't a lot of parts to pick. So most likely it just what ended up as a yard art kind of laid out and it wasn't very good yard art. I can tell you that much for sure, but most likely B junk or a salvage yard, you know, making it into tomato soup cans and little knickknacks here. And so there. we decided the best course of action to save this truck and to use it was to do a chassis swap, basically have a running and driving vehicle on the bottom and retrofit it on. We've never done a chassis swap to this degree. We've done it with similar vehicles, putting an F-150 on a 250, that type of thing, but we never put a different vehicle on a different vehicle and made it the two. So it was rather new and we learned quite a lot. Two things that you wanna do, make sure, you know, you start out with something not completely rusted away. That was a, an X against us for sure. And then make sure that the donor vehicle you have also isn't rusted away. That was a an X against us too. So basically, when we picked this up in January, early 2022, we never worked on it, I believe until March, maybe even April, I would have to back check that. But once we started on it, it was pretty much full tilt at least, I would say at least 15 to 20 hours on it per week. But we ended up having to basically rebuild the entire front end from scratch. We still have to modify it slightly, just, you know, a couple screw ups here and there. But it's not going to be a big deal. But the general theme of the bodywork on this truck has been going to have to, you know, rebuild it from scratch or make it brand new. So that's what happened with both fenders, the front fascia. The box is a complete disaster, but we're slowly bringing it back. All that stuff takes time. And then, like, running boards aren't around. Tailgate isn't around. None of that's around for us to even work on. So it's all going to have to be made from scratch. So that brings me to the subject of this video. Don't let your ambitions run ahead of you a little bit. When I bought this truck, we do a trip every year. And that's basically get in the car, go for a week and sightsee. It originally was with a 1966 town and country station wagon with a 383 and an automatic. Well, we always wanted to do it again with old cars and every single year it never really panned out. I thought in my mind we were gonna take this vehicle and use it on that trip. That trip was August. Cause I saw a lot of 
videos on YouTube of chassis swaps, specifically with F100s and older, like 1966 F150s, that kind of stuff, going on Crown Victorias. Guys doing that stuff in a weekend. I figured if they can do it in a weekend, we sure enough can do this in a little bit of time. That gives us a couple months. It should be fine. Well, turns out it wasn't exactly as fine because, again, had to rebuild everything. But as I'm building along, there's a couple aspects that take a little bit more time, like the arch on that took a lot of time. The arch panel on the fender took a lot of time. That kind of stuff eats up your days. Finish welding eats up your days, that kind of stuff. So it really pushes back timelines and then with the holidays, all that kind of stuff. So either way, I personally got a little rambunctious on this project and bit off a little bit more than I could chew time-wise. I recently said that we wanted to have all the body work done on this before the end of 2022. It's simply not going to work out. Maybe by the end of January, but I wouldn't hold my breath because we still have to Finish weld all this, flip the bed over, do a little bit of knickknacks here and there, but we'll see. Now, is this me trying to say, you can't do this stuff a lot faster than me? Absolutely not. I just don't know what I'm doing, you know? If you worked as a sheet metal fabricator and you had all the tools, you had a shrinker stretcher, you had an English wheel, you had all the forms, all the dies, all the tools you could dream of, bead roller, that kind of stuff, you could get this project done in a lot lot faster time plus you would have started out with something a lot better shape and put it on something a lot better shape you know what i mean if you had all those tools you wouldn't have been nearly as much time into it let me show you around on the pieces that took the most time to build on this truck because there's a few of them tell you honestly great right, first and foremost we're going to talk about the infamous fender from the short video this is it it's basically done what we had to do on this, there was a spare tire well, right? And I'm going to address some questions right now that were asked of me in that short video, but I can't respond to every single last one. But here's a general overview. One guy said, why did you cap that piece off? Because it's a spare tire carrier, you should have kept the spare tire. And I completely agree with you, but there's a lot of the reasons The chassis why. that this truck is on is a 2003 f-150 now a 2003 f-150 uses 17 inch wheels in aluminum that's what was on this at the time you can also get 16 inch steelies which we're working on but that's a whole other spiel but the tire size on this right now is a 245 75 17 the factory tire size on this guy would have been like a 15 inch rim maybe a 235 75 15 it doesn't sound like a big difference but you're talking a lot of height and a lot of width let me show you where it had to that go spare tire well would go right here it would indent in and then that spare tire would go right here but do you notice this we also did a long bed to short bed conversion that wasn't one of the longest things that we had to do it didn't even eat that much time i think that was half a day whatever but that spare tire when i tried to fit it on before capping that piece off, we would have had to cut into our cab and a whole bunch of stuff and that stuff I didn't want to do. The the back, the top, the roundness of the cab and the corners is actually in decent shape and I didn't want to start sawing into that and possibly ruin second something. Second question, second most asked question is, why didn't I use an English wheel on that? It would have been a lot simpler with a lot less time invested. And I agree, but I'm going to show you something. This right here is the barn. We have one concrete slab here. We got a little bit of wood there. The rest is unfinished. Over there is unfinished. Pretty much just a couple tools hanging out around. The hardcore sheet metal fab, the hardcore metal fabrication tools that I have is that bender right there. This dolly set right here. That sledgehammer right there. That angle grinder right there. And these wood blocks, specifically that one pine block up there. That's it. You can do things creatively sometimes, but a lot of people were recommending sandbags or professional tools, and, you know, I just don't have that stuff right now. Down the line, we plan on getting some We stuff. could have put that piece in an English wheel and 
got it all done in about half the time, maybe even a quarter of the time when you factor in welding and everything, but we're limited to the technology we have, you know? So let me show you guys what I did on that. This guy right here, we basically welded it up like one of those Terry's chocolate oranges. You know, you got all the slices that go around in a sphere. That was the inspiration I took for that. And then after we just widened up the fender. As you can see, the profile turned out pretty much exact on what we needed. It's not very bad at all. No real creases, no real indentations, all that stuff. We're gonna leave it kind of rough welded because I guess that's one of the attributes that a lot of people like about this truck. And I guess the last question on that fender specifically is why didn't I buy a fender and change it out? Or why didn't I go to the junkyard, cut out a section of a fender and basically graft it in? Or why didn't I, you know, shape it again? So to answer all three questions, I'm going to just talk about time real quick. I work a full-time job with a lot of overtime. And this is just extra stuff me inside the shop. So anytime like going into a scrap yard or going into an auto wrecking yard, that has to be done after hours. And if they're just not open, it's never going to happen. Now, to buy a fender like this, Repop, I don't even think they make them for an international. But let's say I found one on eBay. I live in Canada. <laughs> so shipping big body parts is not very economical around here. That fender right there would likely cost me upwards of $600 just to get one here. And that's if the fender costs 200 CAD. We pay a lot in freight shipping when it comes across the border. It's ridiculous. So if you can make a panel piece, it's a lot cheaper. Even though I sunk my time into that, that was all after hours time from four to 12, basically at night. And even though I have more time into this than I would if I bought a piece, whatever, this piece right here, it's made out of 18 gauge and then it's all welded up. I think when I did the math, it came out to be like 35 bucks worth of material. There's not a lot of money inside that. And that's kind of the general theme of this whole truck basically trying to save our money for things more important like you know brakes and arms and you know stuff like that the part that's taken a long time on this is this front end here as you can see we kind of screwed up the measurements whoopsie daisy we have to fluff that guy out so we're gonna have to sink more time into this but that's not what i'm gonna talk about i'm gonna talk about basically what i had that was this hood one of the better parts on the entire truck and this grill section down to basically where my finger is. No, right here, sorry. Go across. Everything else you see, the arc, the buckets, that whole bottom valence, both sides, the fenders going across, all of that is custom fab. So this whole truck, the way that it looks, the way that it actually kind of resembles a 51 or a 54 International is because I completely fabricated all that. I'll try to find a photo of the original on how the front end looked. It wasn't good. It was in really, really bad shape. You couldn't tell it was a 54 or a 51 from the photo. Even in real life, you couldn't tell it was. This truck is not an original. It's basically the best I could come up with to make it resemble like an original. You know what I mean? The initial cab work actually wasn't that bad. That was just basically outside. We were limited to daylight and good weather only so it sunk up a little bit of time that way but man hours actually wasn't that bad just an excess skeleton and then paneling it on on the inside we still got to make rockers but that's about now it now the bed has been soaking up a lot of time mainly because of finish welding we said we weren't going to do it but for strength wise i think it's a good option especially with that raised hump section Every single line that you see in that has to be finished, welded front to back, and then we got to do cap pieces and everything. So that's eating up a lot of time. Actually, it's eating up a lot of time, tell you the honest truth. But the whole bed in general has been a little bit of a debacle. We had to make new braces, cut the bed, shorten the bed, new floor, everything. And then when we're all done, we got to flip it over and do it all again. It's a lot of work. Sometimes, you know, you shoot for the sun and you hit the moon. You know what I mean? Sometimes you just got to overshoot and you get where you get. I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. Just talking about the International. There's a whole bunch more content coming on this truck. So stay tuned. Like and subscribe if you want to. 
I'll never really ask for you guys to do that. If you enjoy it, I know you will anyway. If you don't, well, tell me how I screwed up. <laughs> kind of seems to be the general theme of this. Did I mention there's a 5.4 Triton in this? Nah, you'll figure it out. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. All right, see ya.